Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. This series of tutorial will go through notions about flexible and rigid diaphragm design and features related to this in the software. This is the first out of four videos describing force distribution in the ShearWall software. Here you will learn the difference between the flexible diaphragm and rigid diaphragm distribution assumptions. By default, ShearWalls uses an envelope design approach. This means it designs the shear resisting elements for the worst case of the wind and seismic load for both flexible and rigid diaphragm assumptions. Therefore, shear walls will automatically generate loads for four load cases. Wind loads for flexible diaphragm distribution, wind loads for rigid distribution, and then the same for seismic loads. It then designs each wall for the worst case of those four. The reason we do this is because light frame wood structures should behave somewhere between flexible and rigid diaphragm distribution. So using the envelope approach ensures you cover all the possible loading scenarios. Sometimes this rigorous approach is not needed, and we will provide an example later on about when this can be relaxed. For more information about the envelope design approach, please refer to the tutorial 3.2 entitled Worst Case Flexible vs. Rigid Diaphragms. Here we show the difference between distributing forces using rigid and flexible diaphragm assumptions. Say there is a total story force of 96 kN and all the walls have the same framing details, but the walls on the ends are twice as long as the two interior walls. The rigid distribution is shown in the top figure. The 96 kN is distributed based on stiffness or rigidity of the shear walls. Stiffness or rigidity depends on either the deflection of the walls or the relative capacity of the walls. Since the exterior walls are twice as long as the interior walls, they are twice as rigid, so they attract twice as much load when using rigid diaphragm distribution. The figure on the bottom demonstrates flexible distribution for the same 96 kN. In this case, the load is distributed to the shear lines based on the tributary area between the shear lines. The strength and stiffness of the shear lines does not affect the distribution using this method. In this case, because the interior walls have twice as much tributary area as the exterior walls, the interior shear lines attract twice as much load as the exterior walls. This example demonstrates two extremes where complete opposite levels of load are distributed to the shear lines depending on the distribution method. This is why it is recommended to use the envelope approach. To further illustrate this last example in the software, let's use the simple block with 9x9 9 9 meters dimension. The shear line at the bottom of the screen is continuous and without any openings. The shear line at the top of the screen has one large opening, so it is less stiff and has lower strength than the bottom shear line. The link to download this structure is available in the description below. It is now time to generate the loads on our simple structure. If we check the seismic feature in the show tab, only seismic loads applied to our structure will be shown. By running the design, we can see that when we use the flexible diaphragm distribution, the distribution of load is based only on the tributary width of the shear lines, and since there are only two shear lines, the design force is equivalent in both of them. However, for a rigid diaphragm distribution, the bottom shear line will attract more than three times the amount of load as shear line B1. In this example, if you were only to assume a rigid diaphragm distribution, you could potentially be under-designing the shear line at the top of the screen. 